Now, the Congress of South African Trade Unions uh, concluded a second day of its Central Executive Committee meeting in Bromfontein today. The trade union hosted ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa for the first time since he took office. The meeting was called following Kasatu's unhappiness with the president over several labor-related matters. One of the Labor Federation's concerns is government signing off of contracts with the independent power producers, which Kasatu says will result in job losses. Ramaphosa addressed the media after the briefing, saying he feels optimistic about the outcomes of the engagement. When asked about what issues they hope to raise with the president, Kasatu spokesperson Cesar Pamela had this to say. We had uh, the National Treasury talking about privatization. We want to, to, to find out where does that come from because there is no ANC resolution that talks about privatization. There's talk of retrenchments at ESCOM. So those are some of the issues that we want to raise uh, sharply with the president to say we are clear as to what we are not going to tolerate. We are not going to tolerate privatization. We are not going to tolerate uh, talk of retrenchment by state-owned entities. So. Um, of course, uh, 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 the, the president will, will, will give us his address and then we'll engage with it. But we also want to outline to him some of the things that are going to create tensions inside the alliance if they are not managed carefully. We want the president uh, to sort of like give us a sense of what his government's uh, plan and time frame uh, in implementing a, 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 a state bank, for an example. That's one of the issues that as COSAT we have been pushing for. And we, we have said also that we, we don't have the patience to say it's going to take more than five years for that to happen. We want to be told in terms of what is the plan. We, we are happy with the land summit. The conversations that are starting to take place are really encouraging. But also, we also need to have a conversation about the introduction of the independent power producers because we are totally, we remain totally opposed to the independent power producers. To take this uh, discussion even further, we're joined on the phone by political analyst Zamikaya Masseti. Uh, good evening to you and thank you for joining us. Uh, and also in studio, my guest, Afro Worldview reporter Nomusa uh, Pungula, joining us, who, who um, you attended this matter. Uh, you attended the, 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 the meeting and you, you were outside monitoring events and developments. And of course, uh, some rather burning issues were discussed in that meeting, and uh, as well as the president giving his briefing. Well, indeed, Mpo, as much as President Ramaphosa was welcomed and received warmly by Kosatu, however, we understand that there were many issues that were discussed behind closed doors. You remember that Kosatu had said they want this meeting to be a closed session because they want to be as frank as possible with the president. Those were the words of the spokesperson, Suzu Pamla. They are actually saying that uh, the president will not have a honeymoon because in these 100 days in office, they want him to explain to them what exactly has he done in terms of all the issues that had, they had raised before, particularly the appointment of the IPPs, because they are saying that the IPPs appointment will lead to job losses. So government, without having a proper plan on how they are going to deal with job losses in this appointment of IPPs, they are not going to support it. They would remain not in support of it. But also he touched on the job summit where he said that they discussed the job summit with Kosatsu and Kosatsu will be playing a huge role in that job summit coming up. But another issue that he touched on was the, the, the minimum wage that uh, was, was, was approved. He said that um, Kosatsu is going to continue looking at the minimum wage and there will be a bit of tweaking and some changes into the, in the, into the minimum wage. And once that has done, of course, with the support of, of the state as well as everybody else that is involved, then the minimum wage will be implemented. But we also understand that SAFTU remains uh, against the minimum wage. So a lot was discussed while uh, Kosatu continues with its CEC meeting. But President Cyril Ramaphosa says, along with Kosatu's uh, General Secretary, Begin Jalin Jali, that they are very positive. The outcomes of this uh, meeting with President was very positive and everyone is looking forward to the upcoming political council that is going to take place so that they could further carry on with the engagements that started today because this was just a beginning, Paul.
I'm going to ask you to hold uh, those thoughts. Uh, Zamikaya Maseti, political analyst, uh, joining us uh, on the phone. Uh, good evening to you. We, we know that uh, smoothing over some of the tensions was uh, uh, rather uh, an important factor that uh, President Soro Ramaphosa had to consider when he met with Kasatu. Zamikaya uh, uh, Maseti, we, we are live with you on Afro World View. And just uh, a rephrase of that question, uh, smoothing over uh, some of the tensions, the, the boiling and pressing matters between Kasatu and uh, Cyril Ramaphosa were quite pressing. Okay, I understand that uh, we've now lost our guest on the phone, but uh, of course we will try and get hold of him to continue that part of the conversation. Coming back to you, Nomusa. Um, same question that I posed to the political analyst on the line. It was really important here that the president uh, comes out to ensure that uh, this relationship with the alliance continues to be strong because they rallied behind him uh, during the, the lead up to, to him being appointed as the president. Indeed, Mpo. There was also another thing that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa came out and said they spoke about, that uh, they need to strengthen the relationship with the tripartite alliance. You would remember that going to the 54th National Conference of the African National Congress, Kosatu was fully rallying behind President Cyril Ramaphosa to take this office of being the president of the ANC, subsequently the president of the country. So they are saying that they were not giving him a blank check. However, relationship with the alliance is very important, which he also said that as much as the relationship is important, they are a campaigning alliance. The ANC, as the leader of this alliance, has to make sure that that relationship is very strong. Even if there are issues that they don't see eye to eye on, those issues should not be issues to weaken the alliance, but however, to strengthen them, as especially we are approaching the 2019 elections, they're saying that they are going to roll in the alliance, especially into the Tumamina campaign, he says, President Ramaphosa says, this Tumamina campaign is for everyone. The alliance needs to come into party in terms of service delivery. So that was one of the major issues, saying that the strengthening of the relationship with the tripartite alliance was one of the conference resolutions. It is not something that they are just coming up with it now, which Kosato says they are very happy with the way in which uh, or the pace in which President Cyril Ramaphosa and his team are implementing all the 54th uh, national conference resolutions. Okay, we, we go back to our guest uh, who joins us on the line, uh, political analyst uh, Zamikaya Masetti. Um, uh, Mr. Masetti, thank you so much uh, for, for joining us here. We, we, we know that uh, strengthening relations between the alliance, Kasatu, and ensuring that uh, this relationship uh, is smooth and the tensions are ironed out is rather imperative, especially ahead of the elections. Yes, so it is very, very important. Thank you very much, and apologies for this cut-off. You know, when they talk about the alliance, you know, the alliance is a strategic alliance between the ANC, the Communist Party, and COSATU. But previously, we have seen the strain of relationship, especially during Jacob Zuma's era. It is the same COSATU which chased Jacob Zuma away of the major day rally in Bloemfontein. And really, that signified that things aren't well within the alliance. So it's very, very important for the uh, uh, President uh, Ramaphosa to mend those fences precisely because COSATU is one of those key and strategic allies in the struggle for of what they call the National Democratic Revolution. So I think this is a very, very good start for him to make sure that the tensions which were there before the, the, the conference last year are totally eliminated. But of course, there are quite a number of ideological issues that they must resolve as they try to rebuild this alliance. For instance, some of the partners they strongly believe that Alliance should be the political center, not the ANC, not just COSATU, but all of them. They need to make sure that they drive this alliance as equal partners. But that ideological question, in my view, still remains to be resolved because the majority of South Africans, when they go to the polls and vote, they vote for the ANC. But how they define this political center, it remains to be seen. And we're interested to see if Cyril Ramaphosa will accede to that demand. And if you remember, the Communist Party also, it talks about, you know, this reef 
configurated tripartite alliance and uh, you know in their conference they decided that if this alliance is not reconfigured they are likely to go alone and vote as independents or the communist party will vote on its own and break from the ANC in terms of the electoral pact. So those are some of the dynamics which I think uh, the president has to deal with if he has to build this alliance. And, and talk us through the kind of impact that breakaway would have had. I mean, what sort of muscle does the Kasatu hold, um, especially when it comes to, to the numbers and the votes that count for the ANC? Well, if you talk about the mass mobilization of the working class, the poorest of the poor, COSATU is the right vehicle because it controls a number of federations, but it's bleeding as well. The expulsion of NUMSA, the emergence of VAS is SAFTU, it's another challenge facing COSATU because the working class base is highly contested now by SAFTU, is contested by other federations like FEDUSA and NATU. So, but the, the COSATU remains a very, very center of strategic power if you are to advance the political program as Cyril Ramaphosa has outlined his new dawn or whatever you call it but it remains very very strategic not just Kosati, you still have the South African Communist Party you still have Sanko which must also embrace whatever approach President Cyril Ramaphosa is advancing going forward so these uh, alliance partners are very very key in the success uh, if you are to implement successfully your what they call the National Democratic Revolution. And I, I'm going to bring, I'm going to ask you to stay on the line, um, uh, Ms. Masetti, as I come back to our reporter in studio, Nomosa. Nomosa, talk us through the, the impact and, and uh, the sort of sentiment that Ramaphosa expressed when it comes to, 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 uh, um, to, to value-added tax, because this was rather a sore point for Kasatu. Well, indeed, as much as he did not um, elaborate a lot or he did not go into details as to how or where did the discussion go with COSATU in terms of FED, but he did raise the fact that um, COSATU is very much concerned with VET along with the labor brokers. But those are the issues that they are going to continue engaging on as they prepare for that uh, political council that is set to take place. But however, going back to the strengthening of relations with, with the tripartite alliance, he mentioned that they are going to continue having bilaterals with the alliance to make sure that the discussions don't end uh, just on these meetings that are taking place. But also, he said that they are going to make sure that they also bring in the other alliance partners because um, they think that they believe that um, with a strong alliance, the ANC will uh, will will actually be stronger come 2019 elections because you'd remember the constituency the alliance has with their support the ANC or without their support it could actually compromise the African National Congress come 2019 elections but speaking on the 2019 elections you'd remember that Kosatu earlier on this year had said um to, to President Ramaphosa, they criticized him on involving um, a, a former president, uh, uh, Jacob Zuma, on, 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 on the party's campaign program, saying that it is going to jeopardize and heavily negative, uh, negatively affect the campaign of the African National Congress. But however, we understand that um, President Cyril Ramaphosa have been saying that um, they need to, to unite as the African National Congress and all those that have allegations holding over them, they will be dealt with with accordingly and basically saying that no matter what has happened in the past, they need to move on from that and look into how they can unite the African National Congress to bring back or to win back the lost ground. So basically, this start meeting with uh, Kosatu for the, for the first time after his election possibly will mean that um, things are going to look forward, moving, looking better moving forward for the African National Congress. Mr. Masiti, let, let me wrap up this conversation with you on the line. Um, we we, we've spoken about the dynamics and the sort of impact that uh, Kosatu's relations with the ANC um, have on the uh, uh, governing party as a whole. Let's talk now to, to, the, to the person, ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa. Exactly how important is his relationship uh, uh, with Kosatu just for his own political career? Well, if you remember very well, Kosatu was the first alliance partner which endorsed 
uh, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa is the one who should take over from President Jacob Zuma. And they were very, very brave and followed by the South African Communist Party and other formations. So they've showed loyalty, they've showed trust, and he has to deliver and make sure that these relations that we're talking about are managed very well. Of course, these are contradictory relations, but they have to make sure that ultimately these relations are not antagonistic. They are able to find one another. For instance, the value-added tax that you're talking about is already implemented. Uh, You know, banks and retailers, they were very, very happy to increase. If you are paying an installment, for instance, you get an SMS saying that is from the face of April, whatever you're paying will be increased by uh, 1%. It means that this program is already implemented, and I don't see how President Cyril Ramaphosa will reverse it because it's implemented without consulting the alliance. I'm not sure if the ANC was consulted, but as I'm saying, these relations, of course, they are non-antagonistic. He has to make sure that they don't reach that stage of being antagonistic. We still have to see how the Communist Party will respond. Well, I think by September this year, they have to review whether they will still go alone as they promised when they had their conference in Boxburg. So as he engages with these strategic allies, he will have to make sure that he brings them together under the same roof. But it remains to be seen whether the Communist Party will still go ahead with its intention to contest election as an independent political party. And thank you for your time. Thank you for your analysis today. Joining us on the line, political analyst uh, Zamikaya Masseti. And uh, let me wrap up with you, Nomusa. We know that uh, the Central Executive Committee is meeting for a third day, I understand. Uh, or, or was this the last day? And uh, what is the outcome that is expected from that meeting? Well, as they were meeting for the second day today, um, the meeting with the president or or the engagement with the president was just part of that meeting for today. They will continue with their own engagement, of which when we asked them earlier on, you'd understand that as they are approaching their Congress, they will have to elect new leadership. A a, a question of who exactly are they going to support, Uh, but uh, we understand that there's a possibility of a contestation between the second deputy president and the current president, Zingi Swaluzi and Stumwe Lamini, contesting each other for the president uh, position. But however, the general secretary, Begin Jalin Jali, said that that is something that is not of priority for the for the, for, for Kosatu. They are more concerned about politi- policies that are affecting the poor and the working class. So we are waiting to hear how or what will unfold after their meeting has concluded and when are they going to open that process of nomination for their new leadership. And we know, uh, just before you go, historically, policies and and procedures have always been uh, a bone of contention within Mm. Kosatu. Indeed. Like how Sizwe Pamla said earlier on that the, 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 the fight, or rather, the, the, what has been an issue between them and the ANC is policies, how the policies are implemented and how the policies that have been uh, drafted or that have been passed by the ANC-led government are not in favor of the poor and the working class. So that is what Kosatu is saying it's going to focus on to make sure that whatever policies that are passed by the ANC government do actually speak and in support of the poor and the working class as, as it is the people that they are representing as Kosatu because at the end of the day we might have nice policies in paper but if there is no proper or no physical or a way of how they are going to be implemented so that they are realized or they are practical in fact and speak to, 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 to the poor and the working class there is no way that South Africa can progress so it's basically it takes us back to the fact that who is is responsible for implementing those policies and do we have the right people to implement those nice policies in paper and thank you so much for that uh, overview and uh, musa pungula afro worldview reporter joining us in studio there just to give us uh, a breakdown of kosatu's relations with uh, the anc and that cec that continues